Hello everyone, welcome to Overzealous Small Logical, or OWL Reviews, where today I'll be bringing you book feel analysis about The Magicians by Lev Grossman. And spoiler alert for this vlog, I did not like this book. So to start off, The Magicians is often described as Harry Potter for adults. However, I disagree with that description because even though it is more gritty and perhaps a more realistic take on how humans would deal with being able to perform magic, it also is the least magical book about magic that I have ever read. So what I mean by that is not only is there just not a lot of magic performed in the book at all, it also takes all of the joy and wonder out of magic in general. No one in this book is happy, like ever, and none of them have any sense of wonder or enjoyment, but we never really get a reason for their ennui. It's just they're just miserable people. And then the story itself wants to look at the grittier side of things, so it's just depressing all the way through. I wouldn't want to know these people in real life, even if they could do magic. Like, if they came up to me and they're like, hey, look at this magic we can do, and if, if you want, you can join us and do magic too, I'd be like, no thanks, you're all terrible, and I would rather not do magic than have to do magic with you. That I was convinced that Quentin was going to be a villain. I thought that the, that was going to be a big twist at the end. He has a terrible superiority complex for the entire book, and any time that he's unhappy, which is 100% of the time, he blames it on other things or other people. So just to give you a taste of Quentin's superiority complex, I'm going to read two excerpts. One after he graduates Break Bill's The Magical College, and one toward the end of the book where he decides to forsake magic for like five minutes. When he left Break Bill's for New York, Quentin had expected to be knocked down and ravished by the sheer gritty reality of it all, going from the jeweled chrysalis of Break Bill's to the big, messy, dirty city where real people led real lives in the real world and did real work for real money. And for a couple of weeks, he had been. It was definitely real, if by real you meant non-magical and obsessed with money and amazingly filthy. He had completely forgotten what it was like to be in the mundane world all the time. Nothing was enchanted. Everything was what it was and nothing more. Every conceivable surface was plastered with words. Concert posters, billboards, graffiti, maps, signs, warning labels, alternate side parking regulations. But none of it meant anything, not the way a spell did. At break bills, every square inch of the house, every brick, every bush, every tree had been marinated in magic for centuries. Here, out in the world, raw, unmodified physics reigned, and mundanity was epidemic. It was like a coral reef, with the living, vital meaning bleached out of it, leaving nothing but an empty, colored rock behind. To a magician's eyes, Manhattan looked like a desert. Grunning's Hunsucker Swan was absolutely everything Quentin had hoped it would be, which was as close to nothing at all as he could get and still be alive. His office was calm and quiet, with climate control and tinted floor-to-ceiling windows. Office supplies were abundant and top-notch. He was given all the balance sheets and org charts and business plans to review that he could possibly have wanted. To be honest, Quentin felt superior to anybody who still messed around with magic. They could delude themselves if they liked, those self-indulgent magical mandarins. But he'd outgrown that stuff. He wasn't a magician anymore. He was a man, and a man took responsibility for his actions. He was out here working the hard, flinty bedrock face of it all. Fillory? He'd been there and done that, and it hadn't done him or anyone else any good. He was damn lucky he got out alive. And now for a quick series of random rants about other things in this book. What is Welters? Why is it there? Why was Quentin pushed ahead a year? Why did they even offer that to him? And then the caco demons that they all waste at the end anyway. And then what's going on with disciplines? And why was Richard even introduced? And maybe this is a little unfair, but I'm actually going to use this book as an example of why I struggle with adult fiction, because I feel like for some reason in adult fiction, it's a default that everything has to be depressing, or the characters have to be, you know, constantly cynical about everything in their lives, whether it's going well or not. And I just, I don't understand why. I don't understand why, apparently, according to fiction, adults aren't allowed to enjoy things anymore. So that was my take on The Magicians by Lev Grossman. In my opinion, you shouldn't waste your time with this book. However, I will say that I appear to be in the minority on this. Most of my friends have rated this book three to five stars. So I really think it's like a your mileage may vary situation. So if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get all my future book reviews. Thanks for watching and happy reading.